For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Atwalls Outdoors with me, Mike. Send me guys a bit of a sort of tutorial video about how you're going to pitch a driveway awning. It's also worth kind of noting that we've kind of done a previous uh, inflatable driveway awning video for pitching, but this one's a little bit different. Whereas previously we used kind of a keeler, which was very much kind of just a square out from the awning. With this, we've kind of got a the Van Gogh vacation, which is more like a galley or like a camper touring, where it's almost, it's a tunnel tent with a side attachment to go onto the vehicle. Now you pitch this slightly differently because it's all about getting almost two rectangles. So you've got a rectangle out directly and then the rectangle of the actual awning itself. So we'll kind of go through that and show you how that, you know, how we're going to talk about this and hopefully give you a few sort of tips uh, and things to be aware of. So first and foremost, we'll kind of just take it out of the bag, unravel it quite nice and neatly. So first thing I would probably say is I would strongly recommend a footprint ground sheet. Basically what this is going to do is give you a bit more of a, a guide of kind of where it's going to go. But also to protect the actual ground sheet, it's normally sort of physically attached to the awning as well. So if it's sort of wet, muddy, or it's fresh to cut grass on the ground, you're not going to get that on the actual awning itself. But when you can fold it away, it makes life a lot easier. So today I'm just literally pitching this thing and taking it straight back down. Um, so I'm not going to go to the extent of putting a footprint down uh, to so. So kind of, I draw you actually one of the things footprint is as well is make sure you get it nice and square and that's almost like your template to make sure you cover over completely. What I'm going to do now is once I've kind of laid it out, is locate kind of the tunnel section. So we've got a tunnel section here. We'll just spread that too. Now there's multiple ways you can actually uh, connect it to the van depending on what's available with the awning you've got. The probably simplistic way of just throwing straps over the top and pulling the kind of material up to the van is certainly a good shout if you've got no kind of actual fixing points on there initially. You can also look at kind of um, a rail system for me is probably the most strongest way of doing it. So with me today, I've got my uh, fixing kit. So it's, uh, this is going to allow me to connect to the van uh, and drive away with ease. You can, in theory, put the awning directly into the rail itself, but it'd be a lot of faff when you come to drive away. Sure, I can assure you of that. Other ways you can look at is, is a sleeve of most kind of awnings that you can basically put a pole through and then clamp it into a gutter. It's worth noting that if you are got like a winder awning, then a fixing kit would be a must as well. You would just require the, uh, the four to six mil rather than the six to six mil. So, because I've got a normal C-rail, we're just going with that. Often some will also have little Velcro straps like this one has here. So you can almost Velcro it onto a roof bar system or a kind of roof rack or thing like that. You can always kind of, the straps or guide points you can use to kind of wrap around something as well. So now I've actually attached my fixing kit. I'm gonna slide that directly into my rail. It's one of those things that always, it's maybe a slightly easier with a second pair of hands. The key is to kind of bring the fabric a bit closer to the van and take some of that strain weight off it. So feed it in like so. You want to make sure it's dead level, not going to have a kind of snag of material that feeds in nice and gracefully as you can see. Just get that fixing kit all lined up. If need be, like I said, you can pull that material a little bit closer to it. So once we've actually got the physically on the van, the next crucial thing is getting it positioned on the van. This is absolutely paramount because it's, you want to make sure that you can actually be able to open the sliding door as you need to. So a great sort of starting point to make sure, I always go from the front forward, uh, front to the back. So you want to kind of aim for just beyond the sliding door uh, and probably about midway through the panel of the kind of passenger side door or depending on which side you are. So you can just kind of pull that into position. Now, depending on what kind of awning it is, will dictate whether this, will need, this pegging point needs to go directly straight down or kind of angle out. Uh, for me, most often they tend to kind of angle out a little bit just to kind of give a bit of extra space, but also take a little bit of extra tension up out of the actual tunnel section as well. So all I'm gonna do is kind of bring that across a little bit more and then just go at a nice angle. You wanna go almost like just a smidge underneath the van. 
The reason I say this is because when you come to uh, tension it out that way, it's going to pull the material away. So if you want a kind of a tightish fit to the vehicle, then that's what I would certainly go recommend. The next thing we're going to do is actually then kind of initially peg out the next part of the tunnel. What this is going to do is it's going to kind of almost stop you pulling the awning too far away from the van, distorting the actual shape of the awning itself. And what I'm going to do initially actually is almost just have it so this area is just a smidge baggy. We can always tension out if we need to, but for the time being, we'll just kind of go into. Now, ideally you want to kind of go, depending on what's going on in the tunnel section. There you go. Sort of kind of somewhere in line with that front part as well. Now we've got our front fixation point. We'll go to the back and do the same kind of idea. I'll just pull that out a little bit. Again, with the back, you can probably have it at a slight more of an angle. What it's going to allow you to do is hopefully have that sliding door come back a bit more. But if you get the front section perfectly fine, you should be okay. Most kind of connection parts on the vehicle tend to be about two and a half meters. So that's enough for the sliding door to open up inside of the actual tunnel section. Like I said, providing the, the tunnel sides are dead straight, not uh, kind of curved. So again, we'll go in into the section here, angle that a slight bit and then position ourselves again away from the side here. So once we've got our pegging points, just come a little bit square, leave a little bit of baggage just in case and position ourselves there. So what we're almost trying to do is almost pitch sort of two rectangles. We've got the rectangle kind of going kind of out and across and then the rectangle of almost the awning itself. So we've started our rectangle out, we'll continue on and pull that out. Now, because we've got these position points located here, it should hopefully stop us pulling the awning out too far and then the awning leaning into the van too much. With these kind of awnings, it's, it's very easy to do. Uh, and often you kind of think you want to get it as tight as possible to start with. With this, it's a little bit different. So what we want to do is have this directly down the line of where we're going to as well. So again, just pulling it out. Again, probably one thing you can do is maybe not go too far, just get a little bit of tension there, not too much. Just again, we can always pull it out a little bit further after we need to. Again, we want to try and get this almost sort of dead in line with the awning itself. And then you go back a little bit on that back one there just to get a bit more tension in. Perfect. So now we've kind of done our first kind of rectangle, we'll then concentrate on doing the next rectangle. For this, I think it's a great idea to use this line and get that dead straight. Reason being with that tunnel section, you can't really marry up too far. So if you get this line pretty much sorted, you should be okay at the back. So what I'm gonna do, Again, it's kind of, again, just approximately peg it in. This one tends to be the sort of the hardest point to peg because you've got this straight point coming from here. So with this, you can also give it a little bit of, a little bit of flex into it. We can always go a little bit tighter if we feel we need to. I might just actually loosen that up a little bit. Just to kind of get that dead straight. And it's again where a footprint would come in handy because you can almost line everything up initially so you haven't got to worry too much about it afterwards really. So now we've got that nice and dead straight. We're kind of do the retrospective other points sort of a bit closer to the van. Now we've got this kind of like a tape running between the front bit because we've got like this open canopy. So that works well. We can make sure we get that distance quite nice and smart. Sometimes you find these canopies actually kind of splay out a little bit. But again, it's something we can kind of tweak as we go afterwards. So I'm just give that a little bit a go now. There's no real fine art to it. It's more, the more you do it, 
the kind of more you realise, you know, how your awning works or how your awning wants to sit. Uh, and so it's certainly something with more experience that you kind of find with that. But by pegging it down first, what we do is we've got kind of a, uh, a bit of a rubbish day, a bit of a windy day. We've got it nicely secured down, so that's not really going to affect us. We can then kind of pump it up and kind of go from there and just do the final kind of pegging out points. Perfect. Right. So now we've kind of got it nicely secured down. Next we'll move on to the pumping. Now, personally I think it's best to kind of start in the middle of the actual awning itself, just because as you kind of do it, the air is going to go into it a little bit, but also means that there's a bit more kind of strain, less strain on one side rather than the other. It's a bit more evenly distributed. So again, we'll just kind of pop the pump on, pump up. Now it depends on really kind of which manufactured the awning is, to kind of what valves they actually use, they will differ from one to the other. With the Bango, they've got their own kind of airspeed valve, so it's quite a simplistic thing, some they design themselves. Uh, to be fair, it's quite a bit idiot proof, but you can never kind of undo it and leave the valve open, which is certainly a benefit for sure. And you actually get a live reading on the pressure gauge, so you know where you're in the green zone, and you're good to go. Other brands, such the likes of Camper uh, and I believe some like Berghaus, tend to use kind of a what we call like a Boston valve. So with that, it's almost like a one-way valve. Now, the slight disadvantage of that particular valve is the fact that you don't really get a proper reading on the pressure gauge. So what you find is the needle on the actual pin will flick up and then kind of flick down. So you've almost got to do a very slow downward stroke to locate kind of what pressure it is. Uh, but again, from a resistance point of view, it's a slightly bit less resistance than that. Whereas you go down lines of, say, like Outdoor Revolution, Outwell, uh, even I believe Coleman, they have what we call like a, a dinghy style valve. So it's a big open space. You've got a spring in there, so the crucial thing with that is to make sure that you press the spring and it's spring out, not in. If it's in, you'll find you'll pump it up, undo it, and all your hard work goes to waste, and trust me, you only make that mistake once. You can, of course, buy an electric pump if you wish, which can obviously pump it up. It will certainly monitor it to a better PSI, so it's often you find it's in, it presets it. As soon as you get to the correct PSI, it'll cut itself off. But with those, you do need like a power supply. Most of them tend to be 12 volts. So if you've got your van there, perfect. Most have enough cable as well. You can easily do so. Failing that, we do sound like power banks. You can basically have it mobile as when you go. So it doesn't really kind of matter too much how you know far away you are from anything really. So you see kind of from just the pain points alone, it kind of gets into a sort of shape, which is brilliant. There's no reason why you can't go a little bit more than PSI recommended. Most manufacturers kind of will recommend seven PSI as standard, but the systems are test kind of beyond 15 PSI. So for me, I wouldn't have no problems going up to say eight or nine. It's also worth having a look at kind of the temperature, because what you do find is a 10 degree increase in Kind of temperature leads to a 10 degree increase in pressure so that's one thing you have to be a bit careful of so what i'm going to do now is basically peg the front and the back just get it nice and taut and make sure it's all looking kind of as we should and then make any kind of adjustments as i see necessary So what I might have to do actually is, is shifting that way a little bit. So I'm just going to pull it backwards towards there. Even though I said we get plenty of room, it just needs a little bit of a tweak back towards the van in the main kind of tunnel section. Just to get it sitting a little bit nicer. I'll just do this as well while we're here. What 
one thing you do want to do, which I actually I failed not to do actually, is make sure you shut all the doors before you actually tension it. That way what you find is sometimes if you don't do that, you can almost overspray the material and then you'll have an absolute nightmare doing the doors up. Um, but for me, he says, I've pitched this one model quite a few times that I know, but really I, I don't have no problems with the door itself. Don't catch the material. But that's where it's quite crucial to make sure you don't necessarily do that. So now we've done the front, we can kind of then do the back. A great indicator is looking at the ground sheet on the inside and see if it's laying fat or if you've got any kind of ridges inside. Because that would be a great indicator of whether there's, you know, it's distorted in any way. Get that back section. So once we're kind of in this location here, we can make sure we're kind of a bit more in line. Now, I can see we're not quite dead straight here. So what I'm going to do is race through, take this pegging point out initially, kind of sit that back a bit, get that looking a little bit straighter and tension it back on the other side. There's a slight crease in the ground sheet I can see from the inside. So that obviously is reflecting that. And now we're looking at a nice, really nice dead straight edge on that side. And we'll just tweak this across a bit more again, pull the fabric a little bit closer to the awning. So from a material point of view, we're looking pretty sharp. What I can essentially do now is just basically do the rest of the other guide points just to make sure we're nice and happy. Often you find it'll give it a bit more tension in that roof section. When you're sort of pegging, what you want to try and do is you want these triangle parts here. You want to make sure they're dead straight. As they come off the side, often you find they need to con sort of flow, follow the contour. So you'll soon know whether you got them right or wrong. Because it's not only just down to kind of the angle, uh, but it's also down to position where you're going kind of here or going backwards. Often you find the ones on the side are necessarily designed to go directly out. We of course have our kind of own separate pitching videos and all the models that we kind of sort of give reviews on. Um, so you can always check those out and see how say your model pitches exactly, but I thought it'd be nice just to kind of do a bit more of a, a generic video, just kind of as we go and get in that tunnel section. So the tunnel section you can, if anything, is one thing that's probably a bit easier to tweak, mainly because the van can move. Once you've got the awn looking plush, you can reposition the van a little bit as you kind of go. The first thing we want to see is actually kind of the height. Often you find it's kind of a standard height. In fact, let's bring the camera around a bit more. Might be a bit easier to get an idea about it. You can see we've got a little bit of saggage on the tunnel section itself. Now, this is obviously because it's more, it's more of a universal fit rather than that. So what we can either do, we've got a webbing strap located normally on the side here. Depending on which model it is, we're just going to give it a tension up. This is not really meant to be absolutely pucker. It's more meant just to give you an access through this door into the main part of the awning. So from there, again, we can kind of go a little bit further underneath the van if we need to be. So just give it a bit more tension like so. And then with the kind of the points down here, it's best to kind of cross the pegs over just because then you get tension coming back that way against the zips, which means the zips are a lot easier to pitch. And we see how kind of flush that looks. We've got a little bit of fabric, but that's perfectly fine. We haven't got to worry about that. It's more about getting access in and out of the door. And again, this roof section is looking really nice and taut, and that's kind of what we really want. But, and we'll do again the same for the back. So the front there, we can probably, probably quite see kind of how it's looking really nice and sharp. Uh, it'd be worth actually go, go a little quick 60 around it, just to kind of show you kind of how it's kind of looking. Looking pretty sharp on top. A little bit of a ridge there, we'll probably do with tension that back guy point a little bit more. And kind of again, same at kind of the back, we could probably do with tension that a little bit more. But the tunnel section itself, you see looking very sharp. Roof looks great. Good amount of tunnel section inside of it. Um, but what we'll do now is we'll go inside of it as well and just make sure that our kind of door position wise, in terms of the actual width, is where it needs to be. 
because that's of course is the most important thing. So now it's a great point looking at the ground sheet and seeing where there's any ridges or anything like that. It still looks pretty sharp to be fair. It might be a little bit of a tweak because beans come out a little bit more. But overall, that looks really nice, and that's a great indication. And again, how are we looking on the inside? Looking pretty good. Access to both doors quite nice and easily. Tongue looks well, and then we can see it opens up quite clearly. Sliding door opens back easily with room to spare. So again, we've got our positioning about dead right. You can see kind of where we're finishing on the kind of wheel section there. And then it can quite easily close nice and simply. But hopefully that kind of gives you a bit more of a better idea about kind of this awning. Like I said, it's a little bit different to kind of what you see um, in kind of the other video that we've done. It's definitely more about, you know, kind of getting that, those, like I said, those rectangles in kind of the right locations, making sure we've got that bit sorted and that bit sorted as well. One of those things, the more and more you do it, the better and better you become at it. And small little tweaks can can be done at a later date and often you find it's this is probably is the main section getting that sorted first is crucial then the tunnel section is probably not as bad so you can tweet that with the van like I said previously but for more information or queries of course feel free to let us know if there's any other videos you would love us to do and sort of tutorials and try and give a bit more of an inkling about and a bit more understanding about um, by all means let us know in the comments box below but failing that by all means we'll hopefully see you again next time and uh, thanks again for watching